Today we're going to talk about pathological hemoglobin. Last time we were talking about physiological hemoglobin, so we're talking about hemoglobin that's normally found in the human body. So today we're going to talk about the hemoglobin, which if found, it means that there's a pathology. And we have some examples, like high ratios of uh, glycosylated hemoglobin, HbAc1 glycosylated hemoglobin. This means that um, this type of hemoglobin binds glucose in the blood and uh, the glucose will react with the beta chain in the hemoglobin. Uh, we mentioned that hemoglobin is a tetrameric uh, peptide and it has uh, four chains. We have alpha, beta, beta alpha like that and the four chains will form one heme group so on the beta chain the glucose will react and it will form a shift base so if the ratios of the glycosylated hemoglobin in the blood is high this might indicate diabetes or something like that so this is the first example uh, we have another type of hemoglobin which is hemoglobin that binds carbon monoxide so instead of binding oxygen it binds carbon monoxide with a very very high affinity so the affinity is 300 times higher than the oxygen so it begins to bind the carbon monoxide and it leaves the oxygen in the blood so the oxygen pressure will be higher and this causes something called hypoxia the higher uh, pressure of oxygen the more the tendency of hypoxia to occur so this is the second example we have another type like sickle cell hemoglobin sickle cell anemia HBS so normally in the beta chains of hemoglobin at the sixth position in the chain we have a glutamic acid and this glutamic acid forms negative charges so when the beta chain of another heme group comes closer they repel and the distances between the uh, chains is kept at a safe uh, distance so the cells will not stick to each other on the other hand in case of HBS at the sixth position we have a valley so instead of repelling, the uh, heme groups start to stick to each other and this leads to the uh, transformation of the shape of the red blood cell instead of being uh, circular in shape it becomes sickle shape like that and then the cells themselves, the red blood cells, start to stick to each other and they lose their affinity to bind oxygen normally and they start uh, to coagulate like that so um, this of course affects the uh, ability of red blood cells to bind oxygen normally and so it causes anemia so HBS causes sickle cell anemia we also have another example like methemoglobin and in this case the hemoglobin will have iron in the ferric state so it has a valency of 3 plus normally in the tension state before binding oxygen hemoglobin has the iron in the ferrous state so the valency of iron is 2 plus this is called ferrous and 
only in this case hemoglobin is able to bind oxygen and when it binds the oxygen the iron is oxidized to become ferric but if originally hemoglobin has iron in this state it will not be able to bind oxygen and here this ionization process is uh, done by a type of proteins called cytochromes so cytochromes are responsible for this ionization from ferrous to ferric and vice versa so these are cytochromes these are very important we have another case uh, which is called thalassemia thalassemia and in this state the chains the uh, molecular mass of the chains of the hemoglobin is lower than normal and this uh, causes uh, iron accumulation and this is a, a genetic case so it has a homozygous form so the pure form and in this case the individual dies at around 20 years of age the heterozygous form doesn't have um, obvious problems. So uh, these were examples of pathological hemoglobin. Uh, at the end we want to talk about another type of hemoglobin which is not uh, pathological, it's normal. And this one is called uh, myoglobin. And myoglobin is different from hemoglobin add the following uh, criteria. First of all, we mentioned that hemoglobin is a, a tetrameric protein. On the other hand, myoglobin just has one, one heme group. One heme group. And uh, it has a higher affinity of oxygen. So, last time we drew something called the oxygenation curve. And we mentioned that this axis will have the oxygenated hemoglobin, or here, uh, myoglobin. And this is the pressure, the oxygen pressure. So we can say that at 50% or for 50% of myoglobin to be oxygenated the pressure of oxygen just needs to be 1 millimeter mercury just 1 for hemoglobin we said that it's 26 so this means that myoglobin has a very very high affinity to bind oxygen at this uh, low oxygen pressure 50% of myoglobin can be oxygenated and this curve is not sigmoidal as the curve of hemoglobin was sigmoidal it looked like that while well, this curve looks like this so this is a very important point also we mentioned that the heme group in hemoglobin is bound to two histidines one proximal and one distal for myoglobin this distal histidine is replaced by a methionine so we conclude from that that uh, myoglobin the myoglobin chain and the heme group are bound together through the distal methionine, the proximal histidine, and we mentioned that there are uh, groups of the heme group itself at the points 2 and 4 
we have vinyl groups. So these also contribute to uh, binding the heme group to the myoglobin chain. So this is a very, very uh, strong attachment and this also contributes in the high affinity for uh, binding oxygen which can be found in myoglobin. So uh, this is it for today. I hope it was easy and see you next time.